Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the BVM Super Bandit build series. This is video number five in the series. We're starting off with hinging our rear surfaces, our horizontal stab, our vertical stab. Let's dive back in to the build. Thanks for tuning in. Let's go. All right, so previous video, we finished off with the tail cone and we have basically done that. We're actually still waiting for that to cure. So we're moving on to elevator hinging. That's the next step here in the manual. So I'm gonna gather all of our parts up together, um, everything that we need, and we are going to start diving into this step. All right, so first step in the elevator hinging is we take our carbon horns and we've sanded both sides of the carbon horns. Clean them up with rubbing alcohol. Next thing we're doing is we are making the pencil mark um, a little bit back from the uh, leading edge of the actual surface as instructed. I think this gets angled a little bit so that the surface can actually move fully. I believe that's the reason. We're just following the instructions. All right, so we've got all of our horns cut off there and we've also marked out our surfaces. Now, the whole point of all this is you actually need to cut this material away. So you're cutting that material away, you're creating your horn system, and then you're actually building it back up with uh, fiberglass putty. So um, you can kind of see the horns sort of buried in there. So it's a bit of a process on these elevators, but uh, so we follow the instructions as per what they say. So they two tenths of an inch at the root, uh, one tenth of an inch at the tip. We drew that line out and now we need to cut that off. So to draw this out, we sanded this a little bit, roughed it up. So our pencil line would be obvious. And we've marked both sides. So we're gonna trim these guys off and actually what I'm probably gonna do is use my belt sander, um, my table belt sander and, and sand this down, I think is gonna be easier than cutting it. Okay, so this is where plans come in handy. Full scale plans like this are super helpful. So what we do is line up the elevator like this. Um, now these elevators, uh, they're actually larger than they're shown on the plan. So I'm thinking maybe this is a larger surface. I don't know, but anyways, we can line up our root and our uh, leading edge here of the elevator. And at least when we do that, we can get 100% bang on accurate uh, location for our hinges. So that is perfect. And then we'll do our other surface. So again, we'll line up the, the root, line that up to our surface, and that allows us to mark out our hinge points. Just so you can see what they look like. And there you go. Okay, so we've got all of our hinge points, uh, our holes made up here. And uh, on this one, you'll see that we left the glue access holes. So you actually make these holes on the underside and they would get filled in afterwards. So that part's done. Um, all the carbon horns, I sanded the ends off a little bit as well. So I didn't, uh, I didn't cut them flush with the horns. I left the little molding piece on or the rest of it. Um, so we trimmed all that off as well, which is important because otherwise you'll really struggle to get those fitting. Okay, so we're gonna start to organize getting this all set up together. So we need two pieces of 0 0.055 wire. Now the kit comes with multiple sizes. So just to confirm, you can see here 0 0.55, 0 0.055. And we need this piece to be 13 inches. So we'll cut it off at 13 inches. If you're wondering what these are, these are cable cutters for bicycles. So it's actually a Shimano tool. Uh, I've used this for cutting spokes and, and stuff like this for many, many years. I've had these, uh, this pair of, of uh, cutters for, I guess going on almost maybe 25 to 30 years. <laughs> so I'm assuming they still make it, but it's, uh, at the time, they were a pretty expensive little tool. Okay, so in preparation to get this all assembled, we need to mark out the center line of our surfaces, first of all. So we'll measure these guys here. So at the root, we are 10 millimeters. So we will mark that out at five. And then down here, 
We are five, six, seven millimeters. So we'll go to about three and a half. One, two, three and a half. And I think it's even marked on the center line there for us. That's nice. There's a little hole there. All right, so we'll use our drill press vise here and we wanna mark out the center line on the surface. Now the reason to mark out the center line is this is where you are making sure you're running your wire, your hinge wire. Okay, so now that we've got our center line drawn out, we need to work on getting these assembled. Now on the elevator surface, the actual surface, the moving surface, that's where the two horns go. So we'll put these guys together. So we've got a little one, a big one, and a little one. Okay, so the two little ones go inside the surface. So it's important as per the manual that you want this elevator um, rod to sit right against the surface itself. So right now this is pushed all the way in and this is setting up the depth of everything. So we've got that pretty well lined up. All right, so we've got everything ready here to glue. We've got the, uh, the rod taped on the center line, which is positioning the hinges. And now what we wanna do is we want to squeeze those hinges while we put a couple drops of CA through the glue hole. So the reason you wanna squeeze the hinges is so there's no side to side play in the system. That's recommended in the manual. So we'll just pop that in there. There we go. So we'll set this aside now to, uh, to cure and do its thing and we'll do the other surface. Now these of course will get glued with high sol or aero epoxy. All right, so we've got all this stuff glued now. Now what we've got to do is we have to uh, create a recess in the leading edge of the elevator surface. That recess is gonna allow the, um, the, the, the sheathing here to sit flush and down with the elevator surface. We gotta pull the wire out, pull the hinges out, and we need to grind down the leading edge of the elevator. On the plans, it shows the inboard one comes to there. The middle one obviously goes in between the two surfaces and this outboard one goes past the surface uh, half an inch. I left this too long at this point and uh, I think it actually sits inside this part of the surface right there according to the instructions. So, um, so that's what we are looking to do. Now we've got to obviously add a recess here now so this nye rod can sit down enough that the metal can go in there. So I think what I'm just gonna use is my Dremel bit. Uh, this is only balsa, so it's really not that strong, but I think that'll be a nice, simple solution. Just to vacuum in the Dremel bit. So we've made a nice channel there, and this is all sitting together nicely. So when I put this together, I put the center piece in first, just to check and make sure that we had some clearance there. Okay, actually, that would be the wrong thing to do, to glue this nye rod in right now, because that limits our access to the hinge points. So it doesn't talk about this on the elevators, but it does talk about it on the rudder portion in the manual. So we don't want to glue this together yet. So now we want to glue our hinges in, and we do have a little bit of access here on the sides to make sure that we get glue in there. So that's an important thing to do before you put the nye rods on. So we'll get the other elevator surface ready to go as well. All right, so continuing on with the elevators here, next thing we need to do is to get our uh, rod pieces here mounted in. Lay the surfaces on top of the flat uh, plans and mark out where this all mounts to. So essentially we put a hole this direction in the, in the back plate here. Then we cut a little indent just like we did with the nye rod. And this sits roughly something like that in the surface. So I'm gonna get all that stuff measured out. All right, now I'm trying to be as detailed as possible with this stuff, guys. Uh, I've received very many emails saying, please cover all the details of this assembly. 
definitely doing the details of this assembly as much as possible. So you can see here my marks. That's the depth we needed, needed to go. That's what the stopping point there is for. The reason for this line is when I'm holding the surface here, I can use that to judge my uh, drill bit angle. Um, you don't have a lot of room as the drill bit goes in, so you can puncture the surface a, a little bit. Uh, not really a huge big deal because you can just fill it and, and it's easily fixed, but I also added a depth guide on my drill bit with just masking tape. And we've got our first hole done here in our left surface. So this is the first step of this. Now what we want to do is we want to take our Dremel and create a recess just like we did for the Nyrod. And uh, we also need to have a bit of an angle because the rod has a, not a 90 degree bend, it's got a bit of a curve to it. So we need this to be able to sit in all the way. Okay, so we got one setup done here. So what we're gonna do now is take this apart and do the exact same thing, but we're gonna glue things together now. So we're gonna glue our hinge points first. Then we're gonna put our nyrod and piano wire piece in. We're gonna CA those nyrod pieces to the uh, leading edge of the surface. And then as a last step, we're gonna get our torque rod installed here and nice and centered. Now, this is really important. It's gotta be centered based on the, the nyrod and, and piano wire and everything. So, but first we have to get the match done over here. And once that's done, we'll do what I just described. All right, so I'm not a fan of using the nozzles, but in a case like this, the nozzle's very helpful to get into the, uh, the, uh, the hinge points there. So we're using one of the long nozzles to ensure we get good mixing. Now, one thing I'll do, this is a brand new tube of Hysol. This is tube number five that we've opened up or used on this, uh, this build. Sorry, this assembly. Um, so I've warmed this tube up to get rid of any chunkies. So it's uh, just warm to the touch. Use my heat gun. Uh, make sure you pull the label off first. And now this is ready to use and we will start our gluing. All right, so gluing these things, pretty straightforward. We are gonna start off with the hinge points here. We'll squeeze some high saw out to make sure that we're happy with the mixing. So I'm not worried with any of these holes or anything yet. We're just gonna overfill them. Uh, once we've got this one done, then I'll come in with trusty and we will uh, get rid of some of the high saw in those hinge points. But what we're looking to do is make sure we get those hinges glued in very well. Perfect. So now we'll come in with trusty and clean some of this stuff up. Now remember, we are forming the leading edge of this surface, so you can take all your excess and just put it on the leading edge because then it's not going to waste. Okay, so those are glued in. Now what we'll do is we'll insert our nyrod with our piano hinge. Just do this piece by piece. There we go. Okay, so that part's done. Now we'll take our medium CA and we'll just put a bead on each side of the nyrod section here just to hold everything in place. Okay, so we're happy with that. So we'll take some kicker. Just get all that stuff kicked off. Our rod still spins perfectly free. Okay, so now our CA is kicked off. We've got a little bit of a gap here in the center section. We'll make sure we Fill that. Perfect, so that part is done. Last thing we'll do is we're gonna take the excess here. We'll just scrape her off a little bit. Okay, so that part is done. Next thing we're doing is gluing in our torque rod. So this pretty much kind of only sits in one spot. What I'm gonna do is get that glued in and then I'm gonna take my straight edge here and just run that like this. And that should follow the center line of the torque rod. Now, you're using your eyes here to get this set up, but at least it can be very close. Like, 
I don't know if that's going to show up in the camera very well, but that's kind of the center location that we're looking for. So, okay, so we're going to install some high saw down there. You can always use this excess as well. We'll take trusty and use trusty to install more. And I think that opens up in the middle of the surface to be a hollow area. So you can be sure that when you put the, the high sol or aero epoxy in there that it's actually going somewhere, which is nice. Okay, so this is probably gonna ooze out a fair bit when we put this in, but it may not, because it may just go inside the surface. Yeah, see that just went inside the surface. So, we need to make sure we're nice and coated in that area. And this is pretty critical because this is one of those areas that you want the high saw to be curing around your entire torque rod because this is what operates the elevators, right? So this, it, it's quite critical that, that it, you're happy with that. Okay, so we've got that glued in. The base is glued in. We will cover this back section in high saw, but I'm just gonna take my straight edge again, run it along here, check it along the uh, torque rod. We're gonna come up just a little bit. There we go, just making sure oops, that we're happy with that position. And yes, that looks good. So we can do one little thing here to make sure this doesn't move. We'll put a little bit of CA here. Just a little drop. And we'll check it again. Perfect. So now with that CA there, that's yeah, not moving anywhere. So now we can take this and we can just put a nice little layer over top. All right, sorry guys, the camera sh uh, turned off here, but uh, gluing this last part in, uh, the, the torque rod, you wanna make sure that you get good glue adhesion when you push that rod in, because there's a hole that goes all the way into the center part of the elevator surface. So you have to really get everything coated nicely with aero epoxy to make sure it's nice and strong. Now there is a carbon piece that goes over top of this that gets screwed to the base of the surface, but we can't do that now, that's a later thing. But this is done, it's matching one over here is finished. So we're just gonna leave those to sit and cure. The instructions are a little bit vague in this in this area. Um, I guess maybe we'll, well, I don't really need to worry about this piece yet. First thing we need to do is worry about molding that uh, leading edge of the elevator, I guess is the next thing. And we did get a very cool delivery today from Hype Custom Pipe. So we got our tail section for this aircraft, the turkey feathers. Uh, this is a stainless steel uh, accessory. And you can see there that we got the heating already pre-done on it. Just beautiful craftsmanship. So we've got three flush tabs on the end there. Reinforcing piece in the middle. Beautiful. So beautiful work. So this will be going in the tail section here. Uh, soon, once we get back to this thing, but you can see the difference here. So we do have to do some special shaping to fit this into the cone, but it's gonna be a really great addition to this aircraft. Okay guys, so we're filling our leading edge here with polyester glazing putty. Um, now we're going way too thick on this stuff. And I'm not worried about that because it's easy to sand. And the goal here is to build this up and then shape it nicely. So we've done both of them with our first application. Uh, this is a pretty thick application, so it was flowing quite a bit. Um, so we still have a bunch to do on the end here, and then we have to go back and fill some of the low spots. So I'm gonna mix up a bit more and uh, 
get this hopefully done. Now the problem with this is it does cure very quick. This is the product that we're using. Just get it at an automotive sh um, store or uh, like a paint supply place. Two parts, right? And just mix it up. And it's just like Bondo, but it uh, sands easier. And again, the downside is it, it sets off really quick. You don't have much work time with it. So I just mix it up in a plate, have everything ready, use my putty knife and just go at it as quickly as possible. All right, it is sanding time. So we're gonna sand the leading edges of our elevators. Now, generally I don't like to use powered equipment for detail stuff like this, but we got so much material to get rid of that we're gonna use the power mouse sander. So about uh, 45 minutes later, we are sanded on one of these guys. Now you'll see that the wood's exposed there. It's not the actual wood. We've just gotten rid of the primer. There's a primer coat on all the surfaces here. So through our sanding, we have exposed a little bit of the prime or the fiberglass cloth underneath there. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see the weave still. Not a big deal at all. So we do still have a little bit of uh, pinholes to fix and little edges and stuff. So we'll go back and touch that up one more time. And uh, our uh, high saw gluing ports there as well too, we have to touch up. But this is kind of the look we're looking for. So we're very even all the way across. Um, we've sanded the, the height there first of all, and basically brought it kind of right in line with the carbon or really close to it. And then from there, just worked on shaping around the actual radius. Now, I used my table sander or belt sander first, and then went back and did a lot of this by hand. So kind of a mixture of both. Um, so anyways, that's the look we're going for. So we still have this one to do and there's a lot of work to do on that one again, just like the first one. So one of the other important things here is how, you know, how do you get this depth there? Well, when you put this piece in like this, tuck it right up against a flat trailing edge of the elevator. If you look there on that corner, you can see that our actual elevator surface is a little bit long. So we do still have to take our uh, sanding piece and put a little bit of a uh, divot in there. So this is the kind of tool you want to use for that, probably one of the skinnier ones. And then once we add that little indent all along the trailing edge of the horizontal stab, this surface is going to sit perfectly in there. Once we get that surface sitting in there perfectly, then we'll glue in our control horns on the other side. All right, so we got the basic shape done on both of the elevator surfaces. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna mix up some more polyester filler and we're gonna just gonna go in and do any of the small touch-up areas and like little pinholes and such and then we'll sand those out when they're uh, ready. So before we shut it down last night, we did one more coat on all the surfaces here, the two elevator surfaces. So you can see there, we've got a bunch more sanding to do. So we're gonna do that sanding and get these, uh, probably this should be it. I'm assuming we won't have any more pinholes, but uh, we're gonna get this stuff taken care of and we'll see how she fits. All right, so we've got both of our surfaces ready to go. Kind of just takes time and patience to get this to where it's fitting nice. Uh, what I used here was the Model Aviation Products sanding tubes. Started off with the small one going all the way. I also had to use my Dremel on the tips and a file. So lots of different tools. Um, the Near the tip, uh, we needed to use just the small one and the kind of medium next size up did about this section here and then kept the next size up kind of in the, uh, the root half of the stab. So um, just because the, the thickness varies is the reason. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to get our hinges installed. So to get our hinges installed, it's pretty much the same thing we did on this side. We're gonna get them installed, the wire put all the way through. Now we can install all that stuff through this side right here. And then we'll flip the surface over and we'll use our little access holes and we will install some CA initially just to hold the hinges in the right spot. All right, so just getting things prepped up here to spot glue. So what I did was get the tip lined up, put some masking tape over top of it, and then just confirm that the elevator is sitting even. Also put a piece between the base and the elevator. That's to add just a little bit of gap there. So what we'll do now is we'll put a couple drops of medium CA into the hinge points, some kicker, 
and our hinges should be spot glued in place. All right, so we are spot glued on both of our elevators. So next thing we're gonna do is take this all apart and we are gonna high saw our pins in place. All right, so the process for the uh, elevator hinge points here is as follows. I fill in the carbon uh, hinge points and we do that and then from there, fill in the end piece here uh, with high salt. We have to leave a little gap there for our uh, plastic knife rod to go through. So now we're gonna install the surface. All right, and that wraps up our elevators. So we've taped this in place again, just so it's not moving and I'll give you a shot there of all the different aspects. So we've got our carbon piece holding the base. The carbon's been glued to the aluminum uh, bushing, I guess is the best way to call it. And then all of our uh, hinge points are epoxied in as well too. So a couple of specific things here. Uh, one of the hinge points came loose. I think it was one of these guys. Anyways, not a big deal because the other one sucks it back into alignment, which is part of the reason why there's tape on there. But uh, we're gonna let this cure now and do its thing. And then by tomorrow, it should be awesome and ready to, to finish up. So, so we've got a little bit of sanding left here to do on some touch up areas, the hinge point gluing areas. Um, we're not gonna worry about things like gluing the control horn ball on the linkage here uh, because we're gonna do that during the actual uh, assembly of the aircraft, uh, putting all the parts together. So we just wanna get this ready for paint, which is the elevators are there. All right, guys, and that wraps up the horizontal stabs on the Super Bandit and wraps up video number five in the build series. Thanks, guys, for watching. If you have any questions, list them down below. Don't forget to check out the lighter side of RC after dark, which is where we do uh, live streams from the shop here, usually once every two weeks, and it gives you a real behind the scenes look at everything that's going on in the shop. So thanks guys for watching. Thanks for tuning into the show and we will see you in the next video.